Imagine that you're here, standing atop the summit of a mountain. A sea of clouds rolls over from the heavens above this pristine rainforest. The cold, crisp air numbing your fingers as you layer up and wait for dawn at this sunrise. The first rays of the sun that warms your skin and touches your eyes. The first light changing the once darkened sky into colors of orange and gold. What a dream to be in. A dream this cat kid right in front of you guys imagined to see. The same kid who has lived all his life in the mega city of Metro Manila, living amongst concrete towers and gray trotted roads, cars, 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 smoke and pollution, traffic, face to face with hundreds of billboard screens and city lights. I was living nowhere near nature at all. And it was only about eight years ago that made me dream. Dream of that same sunrise, only to get rained upon and soaked with muddy shoes. And I tell you, at that moment, my heart was fully immersed in the rainforest of Borneo, hiking among the tallest tropical trees in our planet and the sounds of the jungle. A beautiful world now often forgotten. These are the last frontiers of nature. Untouched rainforests. Glacial mountains. Raging rivers. Pristine lakes. Alluring wetlands. And an endless ocean. But today, we are facing an unprecedented change and loss of such places in our planet. We have already lost 64% of all our wetlands in the world since the 1900s. Mangroves, swamps, estuaries, coral reefs, all was gone from this time. We are facing a massive decline in the biological species found in our planet, where creatures, elephants, birds, flamingos are left at the brink of extinction. Mining our mountains to a point where forests once grew can now not even bear fruit at all. And polluting our oceans that it's so, so difficult to manage. An irony in such considering that our country, the Philippines, is the center. And not just the center, the center of the center of marine biological diversity in the whole world. And we, yet we are the top three contributor of plastic pollution in our oceans, with not even a lot of solid waste management loss. We already have the science, the technology, and millions of data right in front of our fingertips. But here we are living in the rise of immense social economic development in our own malls, our cities, and our homes, with no real stories left to tell our children. No real stories left to tell the same kids who are dreaming of that same sunrise and the same future for our planet. Now let me ask you guys, when was the last time you actually maybe made time to go stroll in the park? Or like, go hiking in a mountain with some friends? Or even just go bird watching? Or even as simple as planting a tree? Or even as simple as waking up early in the morning to appreciate the sunrise? Unafraid to open your windows, to breathe the air consciously. We have been so disconnected with the natural world consumed by technology, raising our kids with nothing near than iPad screens and hours on end stuck in traffic, trapped in an air-conditioned vehicle, restlessly and relentlessly swiping down our phones and Instagram and Facebook. There's so, so much work to be done. But I tell you, there's hope to reconnect with nature. A lot of people have told me that art, science, and stories don't really go well together, considering that they're very two ends of a broad spectrum. But as you can realize, we are already living in a society, in a world with much more complex problems to solve, that we have to use our different fields, our different passions and abilities. For me, it was photography, stories and science, storytelling, science telling, whatever you name it, we have our own passions that we could use to dwell on issues of the environment and raise awareness to conserve these last frontiers of nature and wildlife. I have traveled to some remote parts of our regions in the planet through photography. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever dreamed of. 
this last year, 365 days, I was blessed enough and lucky enough to travel 22 different countries across five continents spanning from Northern Africa to South America to Europe to parts of Asia and Australia. It was stories that connected me to the planet I knew so little of. There were good stories, nice to hear, just like the sunrises, but there are also ones that move you to act. I was face to face with daunting blue glaciers in the southernmost city of our planet, tipped off, melting, and just receding faster than ever in the past 10 years due to climate change. I have witnessed degraded wetlands and ecosystems due to the negligence of man, bringing an invasive species to a foreign land. And I have witnessed and documented even one of the most beautiful yet underappreciated creatures that is only found in one single island here in the Philippines, the Tamarau. The Tamarau, a critically endangered species, a proposed national land mammal, a unicorn in the wild grass of Mindoro, with only 500 left in the wild, but not sadly, not a lot of people are aware of it. Stories, information, and platforms are already laid in front of us for us to communicate properly, to dwell on issues on the environment, and even maybe the societal issues and the world at large. Because with these ready tools and real stories, could we actually make an impact to deepen our understanding and to deepen our appreciation of nature? We have our stories to tell. We all have stories, and we just need to find these stories in this world that could make it a better place for everybody. Because these stories could actually raise awareness and to educate others and empower local communities and indigenous people to share their side of the story to the world. We have the power to connect and reconnect, exploring beyond and bringing these images and photographs to the forefront of policymakers and governmental leaders to implement the change that we want to protect and conserve. Sharing beauty to inspire. Sharing fragility to care. I have read in a book a short story, a real story, in a book called Let My People Go Surfing by Yvonne Chenari, a founder and CEO of a very sustainable outdoor company. And this, this story was about a simple mountaineer named John Muir who brought his friend to a simple camping trip in Yosemite, in the United States of America. It was a three-day, three-night camping trip surrounded by, and trapped in nature, surrounded by the trees and camping under the stars and talking freely in a campfire. It was just the two of them, living the glory of the wild. Now you would never guess who his friend was. His friend was no other than Theodore Roosevelt, the President of the United States of America. A significant moment that paved way for conservation history in the country signing five national parks, 18 national monuments, and 55 national bird sanctuaries. Do you just see like how amazing it is? How amazing how one simple mountaineer, how one simple camping trip, how one simple story, or even as simple as a photograph, or a simple sunrise could save us and the planet we all share. What more together? And so at last, I leave you with this same, same image from the beginning. You must join me at sunrise. Thank you very much.